Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to the Daily Gizwiz and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1302 for Tuesday, March 8th, 2011, The Conformator. And now, get ready for Dick. Hey, it's Dick D. Bartolo, Mad's maddest writer, and the Giz Whiz. It's just one day a week. No, 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 stay, stay. Leo said it's going to be really good on this Turn the Table Tuesday. Mr. Ricardo D. Good to see you today. I am all. super, super fine, you're sir. Gonna love, and you. You're going to love today's gadget. I know. Uh, I it's it about though? time. 13, we somewhere. passed 1,300 episodes, and I said, Leo, get something I'll like. This thing is, is so cool. Day. I seem to have lost it, though. I don't. It was around here. It was around, <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. I'm wearing it. It's a uh, it's a hat. How do you like that? Actually, this isn't oh. just any kind of hat. What is this? Is a called the conformator? Actually, let me let me introduce the. Uh... Oh God! I dropped it. Oh. God. It looks like it has a satellite Jeff, dish on it. Jeff, come over here. Jeff Scott is here. Jeff Scott is the uh, guy who brought the conformator today. Uh, he is a. His title is Inspector de Chapeau. He is a collector of fine men's hats wow yes and he, wasn't the conformator the person that you always have around when you sign new contracts <laughs> with the staff no that you're thinking of the spanish inquisition this thing oh, okay let me, let me take it off jeff jeff uh, jeff this is uh how old is this come come and lean into the microphone uh, it could be 100 years old there's a patent date on it um from the 1800s but do hat makers still use one of these well hatting is kind of a dying Trade where there I'm aren't hat makers anymore, are very, there? Very few, and these are highly desirable because you need. Oh my word! Look at that. Hat. So this sits this sits on your head, Dick. Uh, actually, yeah. Jeff, can and you, you can, can type you, with can, it? Can you demonstrate this? If I if I if I turn on a camera, I'm going to put this on my head, sure. and then it's not the most comfortable hat I've ever worn. Okay, so what we do is we tighten all these little fingers up kind of so he's tightening up the little there's levers all the way around the brim yeah and he's pushing them does he in. know you're bleeding well that's he pushes them until i start bleeding okay, so oh i see okay it's kind of a, a little okay. bit of a crown of thorns thing yep uh, so nice he, right uh, translate up the air up to some pins on the so this top. is what's interesting let me get this so he's done this now he's fitted it now what what he has is there's then a little hatch on the top here let me show you the uh, the hatch right inside here and and these little pins that have come up all the way around actually reflect my size so then what happens jeff well then we place a piece Somebody, of paper he puts a piece of paper not that piece of paper but any, any piece of paper and you push this down lock this down into place and now the pins that have been raised on the crown of the hat reflect the positioning of the pins of the around head. the here give them to me and I'll and I'll show people there I think you can almost see if I put it real close that there are oh, holes yeah. in the paper where the edge of my head is but now wow. there, now we're not yet done cuz I can't make a hat from that piece of paper can I no that's only half the job now the hatter would cut out the shape put it on file and use that in something called a formature which is the opposite. It would then create the shape of your head, which would be used to custom make a hat to the exact shape of your head, every bump, every detail. Isn't that cool? So yeah. It's really, it's so like, why does this guy uh, sell one-size-fits-all baseball caps? <laughs> exactly. That's why you don't see these anymore, because nobody gets custom-made hats really well, anymore. The, the, you know? the story of hats is very interesting, because it before Ford came along, it was the largest industry in the country. Before Ford... 
The largest this industry. is the largest industry in the country. Sure, Lewis and Clark were looking for beaver pelts. They all had to have hats. hats. Yeah. After the war, it died. Wow. Nobody started, Nobody wore hats anymore. Suddenly it just disappeared. So this trade was so big that... Hey, Jeff, Jeff, go sit over in the other chair so we can put you on a, on a better mic so we can hear you. And if you'd help him uh, a little bit, Alex, get his uh, mic on there. This is so... Don't you think that's cool, uh, Dick? This yeah, is that a, is amazing. This is basically a hat-making device. Or a hat measuring device. Now, where did... Oh, oh uh, I'm sorry. Did you need that part? Did that... No, no, okay. no There's things. <laughs> there's things. <laughs> Put that right up to your mouth and speak right into that. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah right. So, where did you uh, find this? If you happen this? to be Not a seven on... and an eighth, we can fit you because <laughs> that part of the hat. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't find this on eBay, did you? Oh, wow. People got to know me in the antique world and stuff. I'm the guy who collects hats. Amazing. Have you ever seen anything like that, Dick? No. No. own hundreds i've got the best collection. how many hats do you have a couple hundred right now i've boiled them down but i used to sell them at vintage oh don't clothing boil them down <laughs> there's no market for boiled down hats actually yeah, no. i believe hat stew is really awful i've tried it <laughs> so you're saying that uh beaver pelts were used for the in the old days for these they top used, hats they and used like everything that. beaver was one of the best but they'd use mink they'd use nutria which is like a beaver they were there were guys that would go to the Arctic, uh, much like yourself. <laughs> so they would get there. Hunting down rare hairs, pure white but they hairs. But were, they were going to use the skin, not the fur. It's not a fur hat, they use, exactly. They don't use the long fur. There's a a, a, a softer fur right. underneath that, and that was what they, they Yeah, I, I've seen old-style top hats, for instance, and they have a sure. they have a fur on them. There's a yes. kind of a... a, a, a Yes. Sure. Well, I'm a, Jeff, Jeff, I'm going to hand you back okay. the conformator. Conform, conformature. 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 Yes, and here's the little bit that fell off oh, of it sorry. if you want to glue that back. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the whole hat story is a very interesting Isn't that one. Great? And, it, and it gets, there's all sorts of details to it. But it was a secret trade. It was so competitive. It was secret. And nobody has any written records of, of these formulas for felt and all. So they can't. So we can't hats. duplicate it. No, not even if, if they wanted to because they don't know how. And it's too dangerous. It's lost. The Mad Hatter was was mad because they used mercury in the curing process right. for these pelts. Right. So that was a little political dig in Alice in Wonderland about the dangers of hatting. It actually it actually was. Uh, so a I dangerous... just got intrigued by this whole thing, and it's uh, it's led me on a lot of fun adventures, not least of which is being here today with you. Well, this is so cool. Jeff's uh, card, Dick says, Inspector de Chapeau. Inspector, collector, and connoisseur of fine men's hat and men's vintage clothing. And then, do you sell somewhere? Or? I used to. Um, I don't anymore. It, I, I, I traveled. I used to just travel all over the all over the state, finding these. Well, things as you at can see, I mean, uh, it's not on camera, uh, Jeff, but you can see I have two big hat racks loaded with hats. But they're kind of junky hats. They're costume hats. They're silly hats. Yeah. I, I love real hats. I think well, that's. Well, if you're neat. in the city, drop by, and I'll be glad to I give will. a little demonstration of the I pinnacle will. of hat making. Now, now you're wearing a straw, a a classic Panama. straw Panama hat right, from Ecuador. Yeah, the real deal. Yeah, Panama hats came from Ecuador. Of course, why we, not? Why wouldn't they? We discovered them <laughs> when we when we built the Panama Canal, so the workers would come back from Panama with these Ecuadorian ah, hats. I get it. So they became known as Panama hats. I, in South America, there are quite a few straw hats, very similar to this, very sure, popular straw sure, hats. Sure. Chile and Peru, they all have straw hats like that. Sure, sure. And then, uh, and then, uh, you know, I love wearing hats. I don't know if hats are going to come back because it really was in fashion, in vogue well, in the fifties and sixties. And... It probably the first article of clothing man ever put on put on was a leaf over his head you know <laughs> well or something <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe or the second article of clothing somewhere, somewhere <laughs> the man put on or somewhere similar yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i would love to see hats come back i love hats and you could see we're very into fezes here right in the twit cottage and these are beautiful fezes that are in fact made by the fez monger uh to very high standards they're not they're not costume hats in fact Right. Dick, you have one, and these are these are real hats. Yeah, but I would love yeah. to see real hats come sure, back. I just think hats are so cool. Give me some notice, and well, I'll, I'll bring out some of the, the doozies. I would love to do that. Yeah, we'll do a, a, a new show this week in hats. There you go. Twi, <laughs> twi, it just twi. better not be daily. That's all I can. The say. Daily Hat Show, <laughs> the Daily Hat Whiz. Yeah, and and I got a question out of that. Dumb Donald was so dumb. He put a fig leaf on his head and a hat over his blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. There I like go. it. 
I don't like it. So it's kind of a gadget warehouse, like a hundred year old gadget warehouse. Yeah. Item. But I thought it was just so interesting. You know, it, we talk about gadgets as if they have to be modern, but there but as long as there have been humans, I'm sure there have been gadgets of some a sort or other. Yeah, it's a vintage gizmo, yeah. And in fact, remember we talked about that uh, sh f foot measuring? Yes, the shoe thing. That, yeah. that It never changed in 90 years. Right, right. Oh, what was the name of that guy? Oh, I can't remember. Chat that. room, anybody remember the name of the foot device? It measured your, measures, uh, measured your foot. You uh, still use it if you go to the shoe store today. They'll still put your foot in that same... The family still it's like the Broderick it. or something the like Fudor that. Or, or something, something. Anyway. Something. Kind of fun. The conformator. That's our... Uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, I know that. It's called shoe measurer. Pranic. Someone Pranic got it. Device. Ed from Canada. Ed from Canada. Pranic. So, Ed, we're going to send you a custom-made sock. <laughs> we'll measure it with a Pranic device. You know, we're just going to send you this device to put your feet in, push those pins in, hard up against your feet, <laughs> so we have your sock size. <laughs> That is so. Brandic, that is yeah. so cool. Jeff Scott, the uh, Inspector de Chapeau. Thank you so much for bringing by the conformator. I did promise Eva I would get a picture of you. With we'll get a picture. She, Eva wants a picture of me with the conformator on my head. So you know, this is actually oh. since I was a kid, Dick. Everybody yes. in my family knows this about me. I've been somehow fascinated by hats. I had a hat collection when I was eight years old. I don't know why, but it, yeah, I've always loved hats. So uh, hmm. this is kind of fun to uh, get a chance to see some history. Hat history. Hat uh, history. So, Dick, um, let's take a letter, and then I am going to uh, give people some good news. I'll spin it that way. That's okay, good. Some good news that you may not be crazy about. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -ta. Uh, uh, letter comes from Gregory Winsick, W E N C E K. Dick is going to read my letters. That's... Thank you, Dick. <laughs> oh, is that, is that, you know what? I have another one. No, oh, wait a minute. No, please it's... read a letter because I don't have any. People don't send me Gizwiz letters. You know, I totally forgot. No, go right ahead. Oh, okay. Do not stop on my account. Okay, so Gregory, Leo, I thought this was a joke, but. Um, I'll let you do a web search in a minute, and you'll see it's not a joke. Uh, Gregory writes, I want this here in the U.S. Perhaps if you ask nicely as a big-time radio TV personality, you can make it happen. I want the Breville. You, you have some Breville I love equipment. the Breville's. Yes, Breville's okay. a great company. Leo, he wants the Breville toaster with built-in digital radio. <laughs> I have the toaster, but it doesn't have a digital radio on it. Breville is going to launch this in oh, Australia. You're oh, you're kidding. It is already available in the UK. I'm it so jealous. It combines the radio, digital radio, with a toaster. Oh, and look at it. It's very cool looking. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It looks like an old kind of Crosley radio with an antenna and toast coming out of it. Yeah, and a speaker on the side. It's quite bizarre. <laughs> By the way, the site price? that's doing I the review. I imagine it must be uh, way up. Oh, yeah, because Breville stuff is a little bit more expensive in Breville, general. Yeah. You know, it's funny. They say if you're looking to buy a separate radio and toaster, take a look at our reviews of tabletop and pocket radios and more than 150 toasters. <laughs> oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> so and, and a big roll of scotch tape. But <laughs> yeah. it's not the same. Not the same. Let me see. Uh, radio streaming news kitchenfeed.com. Maybe they'll have a price on here. Radio toaster. Wow. Oh, $79. That's, That's Australian. Old. That's Australian. That's less all than Australia. my regular Breville toaster. It is. So it's not as fancy because our Breville toasters are pretty sophisticated. Okay. Well, $79, 
Australian is what no, is the rate of exchange? I think it's eighteen hundred dollars U.S. No, it's pretty That's, much. Oh. No, it's close. It's close. <laughs> that would be, that'd be more like it. <laughs> uh, anyway, and Gregor goes on. Thanks for the many hours of entertainment and the occasional crap I purchased from <laughs> Gizwiz.biz. Well, I, uh, you ain't getting a conformator. I think that's a, definitely not. No, a, no, that's a one of a kind. Here's a website somebody in our chat room sent me: House of Nines Design, uh, a conformator, and then this is the other side of it. Jeff, you got to get these. This is the formateur. This is the thing that takes the paper readout and turns it into a hat mold, oh. which you can then make a hat out of. Isn't that clever? You know, you could do that in the basement of the new uh, building. I think I think you should you Twit Cottage and Hat Making Store. Yeah, exactly. Come in and get your own custom made Twit hat. I do wish yeah. hats would come back. I don't know why. Leo, so you could make it happen. You the problem is happen. that uh, hats were big in an era of con of conformity, where most men would either wear a bowler, a fedora, or a Panama. They kind of all wear the same hat, wouldn't they, Jeff? I mean, it's yeah. You it, know, the uh, this swing dancing thing that started right. about ten years ago got guys interested in vintage clothing and right. the hats. So there is a buzz around. Certain guys know that about these hats, and there is hat fever. Sometimes guys hat get fever. hat fever and get obsessed with hats. Me and Charlie Sheen, we got hat fever. <laughs> yeah. I, got, yeah. <laughs> I had to work that in there. You know, somewhere. whatever happened, I don't hear much about him these I know, days. You never Is see his name working? in the press. I, you know, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dick, thank you. And thank you, Jeff Scott, the inspector de chapeau, de chapeau for bringing by the conformator. And now you will all conform. Dick, we'll see you tomorrow for a regular. Gizwiz episode. Oh, I guess we were going to make that little announcement. I guess I should do it, shouldn't I? Yeah. So I won't be here, but Never I will again. be here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, we. Uh, this is a tough thing to do. I love this show. and You know, we've done so many of them. This is our 1,302nd episode. The reason we've done so many is we were doing five of them a week, which is grueling, uh, but, but people, I think, really uh, enjoyed it. However, what we have found, and this is kind of the bad news after five years, is that people do not listen to five shows a week. They may download all five, but they only listen to one or two shows a week. Uh, and for that reason, we've ha always had a very hard time selling advertising on daily uh, podcasts. So we've decided to make the Daily Gizwiz the weekly Daily Gizwiz and uh, do it once a week. Uh, now, there will be plenty of gadgets. In fact, in some time cases, there'll be more gadgets. We're definitely going to keep doing Turn the Table Tuesday, Warehouse Friday, uh, and uh, at least one gadget, maybe two or three every week. But it'll be in one show that you could, if you chose, divide up into five episodes. But we just feel like it's going to be easier to get advertisers, easier to get support, and ultimately we need to make the show uh, um, uh, not lose money. <laughs> it doesn't have to make money. It just can't lose money <laughs> in the long run. So we hope that uh, we can, by making it a, a daily show, uh, build the audience a little bit. Uh, Dick, I, 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 it brings tears to my eyes. We're going to finish this week. We are going to take a week off, and then we're going to start doing it daily. Um, I, I'm not sure which day of the week we'll release it. That's kind of, uh, I'd love to hear from all of you what your thoughts are on that, if there's a day you'd prefer it. But we will continue to record it as we have live every Saturday afternoon right after the radio show, about 5 o'clock Eastern. Uh, so we encourage you to... Uh, to continue to tune. Yeah, we're going to throw in lots of silly stuff, some mad we'll minutes from time to time, and some match game. Right. It's it's going to be a hoot and a half. I think it'll. You know, it could be, be a, a great hoot show. And three quarters. We don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be a great show. Uh, just as much fun to listen to. There just won't be five of them. There'll be one. Probably be almost just as long as listening to five. So it don't seem that way. <laughs> I think maybe a Monday release uh, or a Tuesday, you know, to begin your week, and then you could decide to. Oh, that's a good out. idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. What we found is that the shows that do the best are the ones closest to the week, uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday. And we believe that's because people uh, open their eye. And actually, I'd love feedback from you in the audience. Open their iTunes around once a week, especially if you're on Windows. It takes so long to get iTunes fired up. So they fire it up once in a while to download all of their shows. And then they listen as much as they can during the week. And what was happening is they were listening to the first two or three Gizwizzes, but not all of them. So I think a better way to do it. We're not going to cancel the show. I will never cancel the show. I love this show. Even if, if this doesn't work, then we'll do it once a year. But we're going to keep doing it, I promise. <laughs> That's right. 
though. I love this the show. The yearly <laughs> weekly Gizwiz doesn't have quite the same <laughs> ring. To it. I think weekly. So what, weekly. Welcome to the <laughs> once every fifty years <laughs> daily Gizwiz. The Diamond Jubilee Gaily Gizwiz. No, and think... from their rocking chairs at the old folks' home in Petaluma. <laughs> the weekly Daily Gizwiz is about the best show name I've ever heard. So I think we should do very well with that. Dick, I will see you. We will continue to do it this week, though. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be here. D-A-I-L-Y. It's the Daily its own gravy. Yeah.